All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Welcome to the Excelling Church, Georgia campus, where your life gets better from here, y'all. It's love's imprint time, y'all. Are y'all ready? Yes, let's make some noise. Yes, 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 yes. So if you could right now, do me a favor. Go ahead and like, tag, share. I'm about to share right now to my Facebook platform. I'm about to say, join us. It's time for Love's Imprint. There we go. Yes, and it's here. Yeah. There we go. So if y'all could do me the same favor, go ahead and like, tag, share this to your own Facebook platform, y'all. It's about to be amazing. Uh, my boy Deacon Jeremy is online. What's going on? What's going on, my brother? My brother FX Rollins, my boy, man, the super producer. You know what I'm saying? He's online with us today. What's going on, brother? Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much, so much, so much. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, and I'm, I'm going to do a bunch of hearts. So I'm putting in mad hearts right now. So you should probably see my face online. I'm just tapping hearts, 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 hearts. Trinity is online. What's going on, Trinity? She's online and in the house. That's what I like to see. Double, d d double dipping. I like that. <laughs> Look at them hearts. That's what I'm talking about, Trinity. Look at them hearts. Yo, Deke, Jeremy, what's up, man? We love you, brother. We love you, we love you, we love you. Miss you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good evening, good evening. Yeah, you want to come down a little bit? Is that good? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. No, don't you touch me. I'm not touching you, I'm touching the chair. <laughs> you, I'm not gonna go. It's on this side. <laughs> you gotta stand up. <laughs> okay, we good. Don't touch me. I can't. I don't want her to see my notes. All right, then I don't want you to see my notes. It's gonna be a funny. This is gonna be a funny night, y'all. Is I think it? It's it's gonna be a heavy night and also a funny night, but it's also gonna be very very informative, y'all. Very informative. So, how many of y'all have actually missed Love's Imprint? I did. Y'all missed Love's Imprint? I did. Because I, I'm thinking about it. I don't think we did it last month, did no, we? No, we didn't. I don't, yeah, I don't think I was Yeah, we didn't do Love's Imprint last, last Thursday because... What was the reason? We were gone. Were we gone or were we sick? I think we were sick with COVID. Yes, I think that was it. That was it. Yes, COVID struck the Peacock household, and we had to shut it down. We had to shut it down. So Ooh. we were unable to do Love's imprint last month. But the Peacock household is back together. What <laughs> What's going on, say? Shaquilla? What's going on? Jeremy said it's, is it it's Valentine a Valentine's Day. No. Oh, my gosh. Oh I'm my done gosh. with I, you. I can't. I can't Go close your eyes. Jeremy. I can't. I can't. I can't. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know if he's. I don't know if Deacon Jeremy Speak. is more lit online or actually in the building. He, he's just. I think he's about the same. Oh, uh, you think he's about the same? I think he, he's he about lit the same. Both in the building. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Welcome. <laughs> Are you good? You're good. <laughs> amen. 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 Yes, love's imprint, y'all. We about to get started in a little bit. Um, he is right here. Yeah. Yep. All right. Are oh, you, you gonna do it? Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. So do you want to start? Well, let's start off in prayer first before we even get jumping. you want to start with that? Yeah, let's start so off start. in prayer. <laughs> and begin. All right. If your all hearts and minds are clear, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you again. We give your name glory, honor, and praise. It belongs to you and only you. Thank you, Father, for first of all, waking us up this morning, giving us the activity of our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our limbs, Father God. And we give them back to you tonight as a sacrifice of praise, Father. Thank you for this moment of fellowship of, of God, of God, of your people, of men and women of Christ, Father God. We're coming together as a fellowship. Thank you for this moment of, of transparency, discussion, Father, this moment of empowerment. Father, we also pray that even though we're having a discussion in regards to love, that we keep it focused and centered on you. Father, we ask even in this moment that Pastor Jerrica and I, we decrease as you increase in us. Give us the words to say and the wisdom to push forth to your people today. And Father, we thank you for those of us in the building tonight. Bless them in a miraculous way. And we thank you for those of us that are online, our online campus tonight that are also watching. Bless
bless the miraculous. In Jesus' mighty master's name we pray. And God's people say amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, 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 amen. yes. Amen. Shawana, what's going on, sis? We Hi. love you, miss you, miss you, miss you, miss you. Oh, make sure you like, share, yes. and tag. <laughs> like, share. <laughs> we're going to have to find a new spot for that one, sir. That's what we're going to have to do. <laughs> we, may have to, we may have to mount it for, for, for nights like this, for Love's Imprint, and like for Thursday nights. Probably. We may have to mount it up on the wall. Probably. Yeah, that'll okay. work. Okay. That'll work. All right, so I'm, I'm excited about tonight. I don't know about y'all, but... Y'all should be excited because we're about to have a discussion tonight that I think is going to, man, and I'm, I'm kind of outnumbered tonight, so I don't know. You are. I don't, he coming? Okay. That I, ain't going to help. CP, I need That's you, brother. That's not going to help. I need you, brother. I need you tonight, so I'm going to need you to, don't speed, but just ask that God clear the pathway. I so you would can get love here in time to see what enough. you have to say about this topic. Uh, man, so. That's why I'm going to let you go first. So this topic, so for those of us that are new to Love's Imprint, what we hear, we talk about, Pastor Jerrick and I, we have a transparent discussion about love. And what that means is we talk about the type of imprint love either has left on your life, is leaving on your life, or the type of imprint you will aspire love to leave on your life. Amen. We talk about relationships. We, Our doors literally are open. We are an open book. We begin to talk transparently about our relationship, what it's like to actually balance being pastors, being a mom, being a dad, being a husband, being a wife. Amen. And then we just talk about what God has done in that moment. But we keep it very, very transparent. So I'm just letting you know now that we... we, we <laughs> We're going to keep it godly focused, amen, but we also going to keep it very transparent because we understand that we don't want to build an atmosphere where you all are, are uncomfortable to speak to your pastors, to be open about the things that you're going through, amen, and so we want to create an atmosphere and cultivate an atmosphere to where you are comfortable enough, but not only do you leave here and inspired, but you left here with something that you can learn from, amen. So that's what Love's Imprint is all about. And so I was pulled aside by one of our partners about a week ago, a week or two weeks ago. And they literally said, they say, Pastor Dez, listen, for Love's Imprint, you and Pastor Jerrica need to have a discussion about this particular action, this word, because I need to know what this thing looks like. Rip the Band-Aid, please. So, tonight we are going to talk about what does it look like, what does it mean to be submissive. Amen. I told you, dude. I told you. Every time we meet every month, we're going we gonna to peel this onion. We're going to open this thing wide open. All right. We're going to talk about what does it mean to be submissive? What does submission mean? How, how do, what does that look like? Amen. So we're going we gonna to crack this thing wide open. You ready, Pastor Jerrica? I'm ready. I'm, I'm waiting ready. for you to start. Okay. I'm, I already started. I, I did it. I, it's No, sir. I no, sir. It. What? Go ahead. Nah, nah, nah. Chill, chill. Nah, nah. I, nah, I'm going to let you go. Go ahead. I'm going to let you go. You know, I'm outnumbered right now. So it's... it's it's a lot of it's a lot of women of might, mighty women of valor in the in the atmosphere tonight. So I, I need not. to make sure that I choose my notes wisely. You know, he said <laughs> his notes. You heard that right? His notes wisely, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Patrice Mills, what's going on? Thank you so much for joining us. Mama Peacock, my mother, Gloria Peacock, is online. Thank Amen. you so much hey, for joining mama. us, Mommy. We love you, miss you, can't wait to see you soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's let's get into it. CP, where you at? I need you to get here. Okay, I'm going to start CP. first because you're just so worried about CP right now. <laughs> okay, we're going to open up our Bible. Sorry, we have no one in the sound today. I can't run two places. <laughs> so we're going to open up to Ephesians 5 all and right. 21. Okay. I was that. that yeah, was uh, uh, yeah. Look at okay. that. Equally yoked. Okay. Jesus. All right. I like it. Um, <laughs> yes. I am going to get you there. It's in the back of the Bible. In the, in back. the back. In the, <laughs> in the back. back. I got you, girl. I got you. 
Bam. Yes. All right. There we go. So Ephesians 5 and 21 says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that one stuck to me like head on because it says submit, of course. That's where we started off at. Mm -hmm. But it says to one another because a lot of times they owe everybody forget that part and always says a woman needs to submit under the Mm -hmm. husband. So it's not just the woman that needs to submit. It's the husband, too. Say that. Say that. Say that. Tag team, you want to go next? You want to go after that? I don't even know if I want to go right now. All right. So let me continue with my notes. Well, well, before we even jump into our notes, let's open it up to, to those of us online and those of us that are in the building, okay? What does submission, submitting, submit, what does that look like to you? What does that look like to you? We have a mic that will be passed around for anyone that would like to comment. And for those that are online, we are not going to forget you. So go ahead and leave us a comment and we'll go ahead and say it for you. Abigail said that part. (laughs) Man, Pastor Jericho, you want it tonight, boy. That. (laughs) No, it's the truth. A lot of times men use that phrase, submit under your husband. Or we use that when we're about to get married. You have to submit under your husband. But no one ever talks about the fact the first thing it says is that we have to submit to one another. So it's not a one-way street. It's not a slaving thing. It's not a dictatorship. It's a partnership. Wait a second. (laughs) Where is CP at? He ain't here. So let's continue. (laughs) All right. So... So look, um, even Jeremy's with me. Of course, that's, Deacon that's, Jeremy's with you. Of course, see? I mean, it's, so you it's, can't it's, be mad. Right. You have to agree because it is the truth. It, no, it is the truth, and and I and I get what you're saying, and and I totally understand it in regards to that because the pro- one of the problems that we have is we like to die, we like to grab scripture to to yeah. let it fit our narrative yeah. at that very moment. But the problem is we don't read the chapter. Right. We like to grab the scripture. Exactly. We like to just we let, let let me let me read these two scriptures and say, you know, but the Bible says yes. you need to do this. But if you read the Bible, <laughs> you would understand that, you know, the the context is completely different. Correct. And so like I like we always say here, when we read scriptures, when we teach, when we preach, we actually give a a, a, a foundation uh, history on the text prior to going into the actual scripture, and so we always want to let you all want let everyone know that when you're dealing with the word, when you're dealing with relationships, and you're trying to understand relationships biblically, and you find a scripture, read the entire chapter, read the entire book, because I'm gonna tell you the book itself, you can understand why it kind of channels yep. into those ty- into those specific scriptures. Amen. So yes, it is. In my mind, when I think about submissive, being submissive, the first thing that comes to my mind is you obey the authority, right? Now, listen now. Listen, because I saw saw eyes looking at me when I said obey the authority. But in order to obey the authority, you must recognize the authority. You must recognize the authority, okay? And... In order to recognize the authority, you must understand who want, who you're being submissive to. Right. You've got to understand who you're being submissive to. And, and you're right. In today's society, growing up, even that word submissive, that word it has submitting, a bad rep. it definitely has a bad rep. They feel that the first thing about they, when they hear that word, they think, like you said, I'm a slave. I'm, I'm to be seen and not heard. Correct. You know, I, I, I'm I'm to I'm to just be that person that that that's that's in in need of the man, as mm-hmm. opposed to me not having a voice. But what we also have to understand is back then in the biblical times, there wasn't the woman did not have a voice. We got to be honest. At that moment during those times, the woman did not have the voice. The woman was the woman was seen and not heard. And sometimes the woman wasn't even seen. Yeah. You know, there was in, there, there was some scriptures that would say that the man had many wives, but it only talks about certain wives in certain in certain stories. So we also have to understand that when we read the book, we have to understand 
the, the, the climate, the, the, the history, the lifestyle of, of, the, of, the, of the book at that point in time. So when it says, you know, wives, submit yourselves to your husband, in that point in time, it did mean, one, you got to recognize the authoritative role that the husband holds. Mm -hmm. First of all, in order to obey, and obey in this context isn't more so like you obeying God. It's more so you recognizing that you recognizing the position that God placed this man, your husband. Mm -hmm. Okay, you recognize that. And then what you do is, is it becomes a it becomes more so of a team. It becomes more so of a connection in regards to I'm going to push you as you push me. Mm -hmm. But I recognize that God made you the head. And 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 I'm I'm waiting. CP got about two more minutes to walk through this door. <laughs> Because, <laughs> because it, it, it's, that word has been so perverted. It has. Oh, yes. Yes. It's been substituted to put woman, women in a position to where they're not supposed to be their own person. Yeah. It's put, it's put women in a position to where they feel as though they, 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 they feel as though that, that, that word means that they're being controlled. And it has nothing to do with being controlled. It has nothing to do with you being, you being seen and not heard. Go ahead, Pastor Jerry. It has nothing with being controlled, but some men will use that and say, well, you have to agree with what I'm saying, or wow. you have to feel the wow. same way I'm feeling, and you have to accept the behavior that mm. I'm giving. Mm. And it's not the case. So when it's time to buy a house and the husband don't agree, or it's time to uh, have a child and the husband don't agree, or it's time to, you know, budget differently and the husband don't agree. Mm. Yes, we submit under to you, but we don't have to accept your thoughts, your feelings or behaviors because you're not our God. Wait a second. So sometimes men will take that position in that role and make it as though that we're supposed to look up to them rather than God. Mm -hmm. It's okay for our opinions to be heard and it's okay for it not to come to pass because we are supposed to submit unto the, un under them. But we do it with love. If there's no love in the obeying, then there is no, no how do you say, there's no God in it. And therefore, you're worshiping an idol. You're being a slave. Therefore, you are coming under to be in a, sa a slave to your spouse. Mm. Um, so a lot of times we do have to watch out for that because I know some, some marriages, some relationships are unhealthy. And especially when they take this obeying as the wrong way. They take it left field completely. Uh, go ahead. And the crazy thing about have you ever noticed, because I mean, I've, I've, I haven't done that. You know, I have no, he that. has not done that, <laughs> but I've heard it. I've heard it. And the crazy thing about it is I've heard it in arguments. Mm -hmm. I've heard it when there is a disagreement. Yep. I've heard it when the husband wants to do something and out of wisdom, the wife doesn't or the wife says that's not a good idea. And the husband is like, well, you need to submit because I'm the head of the household. You know, what I say goes, and the Bible says you are to submit to your husbands. But that's when we have to read. That's when reading is very, very fundamental in that moment. Because, so Pastor Jericho brought up the first, the first scripture, which was submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So you submitting to your husband and your husband submitting to your wife is literally in connection with your reverence to Christ. Connection with your submission to Christ. So think about it this, husbands, okay? If we made those kind of comments to our wives, you need to submit in reference to you thinking that your wife needs to do whatever you say. Are you saying that to God? Because the same, the, the, the connection of submission, is it, it, it correlates with our reverence to God and our submission to God. So are you saying to God, well, God, you, God, you need to listen to me because you said that I, you, I'm supposed to be submissive. I'm, 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 I'm rambling, but I'm trying to get you all to understand in that moment, it's almost as if your respect for your husband 
it's kind of it's got to be on the same wavelength as your respect for God. You see what I'm saying? Ah, oh, man, it's, it's 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 and it's in my notes, but I, I don't want to give you the meat yet. But it's coming. It's coming. Don't read coming. mine. No, I'm not reading yours. I mean, your your notes is all over the place. Mine's is you know in chronological order. In chronological order. Yeah. So if we continue the verse, right? We go to Ephesians chapter. We are in chapter five. So we read chapter 21. I'm going to read, I mean chapter. We read verse 21. I'm going to read verse 22. It says, okay, four wives. This means submit to your husbands as to the Lord, right? For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. That's what it says in the New Living Translation. Now, what does this look like, Pastor Des? So I'm going to really look at this. So we look at verse 24. It says, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. Should. So what does that come to me? What, what does that say to me? Submission is a voluntary action. Voluntary. Okay? It's voluntary. So if you are feeling as though you are forcing, you're being forced to submit to something or be submissive to your husband, chances are your husband isn't walking in the spirit. Chances are you're not functioning godly. You're functioning in the position of flesh because your husband may feel as though they are, they're, they're taking this head of household thing a little further than they need to take it. So, cause it's voluntary. And that's another thing. What makes it voluntary is women, you have, you have the authority to say no. You have the authority to sit there and say no. You have what we call choice. You can choose to say, okay, God, I'm going to submit as I submit to you because this is the man that you bless me with. Or you can sit there and say, God, I ain't doing it today because there's something ain't right about this situation. Or I've seen women that just don't want to do it because they just don't want to do it. They just don't like the fact of being submissive. They don't like that fact because they've been either on their own for so long it's been all about them. They, 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 they've, they've been, I would say, settled. Not settled, but they've been established, mm -hmm. you know. And now it's time for marriage, and they, they are getting married, and then they feel as though now it's no more about what I'm doing. It's more so about how do I, how do I submit under the authority of the man that I'm going to be married to. You see what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, we just in the, we just in the women's side. Trust me, I got some for us husbands. It's coming, it's coming. I think even um, with women in that role right now, it's, it's also, do you respect the man? Mm. Do you mm. respect the man? Do you trust the man enough to submit under him? Because there's a lot of things that men have to do in order for women to feel safe, secure, and enough uh, respect Say for them that. to do it for them. Say that. It's a give and take. So although it says husbands love your wife and wives respect and submit under your husband, you still have to give some type of women still have to love their husband and men still have to respect their wives. Mm. If those things aren't happening, it's not easy to give out. And I, I think the, the biggest, one of the biggest things to always keep in mind uh, is it's a God-driven desire to please your husband. It's a God-driven desire to please your husband by being submissive under his authority. So just, from, just, just note that when you're doing it, you're pleasing God. And that's like the biggest thing. You want to please God in whatever you do. So you are being, being submissive to your husband. That's pleasing God. That's pleasing him, right? So we have comments because oh, we, we don't want to miss you guys. Jeremy, uh, Deacon Jeremy said, it don't make it any better when they misuse the word submissive in movies. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, Miss Abigail says submission requires love, not fear. Ooh. Uh, she also says submitting out of fear is manipulation. Wow. 
And wow. Mama says submission brings understanding and a relationship to partner. Mm. I got some good. So this is a lot of a lot of people understand what the submissive thing is. We may not have to stay on this too long. You just don't want to be in the hot seat right now. Oh, I trust me. I, I'm good for the hot seat. Trust and believe. Trust and believe. So, how how many women have been married or are married right now? Can you honestly say that you submitted under your husband and was it easy? Anybody care to answer? <laughs> yes, please. Oh, it's on. It's on. In the day, I'm still human. Mm. So sometimes it is still hard when we have differences. But like we said, when I learn that submitting to God first is submitting to my husband, mm. then it makes it easier. But mm. it's not always easy. And it's definitely not something I did from day one. Wow. <laughs> right. Um, because submitting was definitely, like you guys have already touched, it's never been one of those things where um, <laughs> it was... It was handled properly. Right. Um, it, it, it was one of those things, submit to me, because I am the man, submit, submit, submit. But then we forget that as I'm submitting to you, like you said, what am I submitting to? That's what it. am I following? Because I'm not going to follow a person that's going to lead me to destruction. I'm not going to follow a person that I cannot trust. So w the more I develop my relationship with my husband, and I learned to trust him as the man mm. and I trusted the God in the man, then it made it easier to submit. So even when I don't agree, I trust the God in him, which caused me to come subject to submission. Wow. And that's the hardest part, trusting the that's man it. to do that's what it. he needs to do. Even when he's wrong, you got to trust God to know that he would take over in the wrongdoing. <laughs> we got so fun. <laughs> I can't. So I wanna, I wanna uh, also. So we we still on we still on this submission submissive in regards to the woman, and I wanna say this. What I also thought about was being submissive and all that is, it doesn't a woman uh, so a submissive woman does not mean she is under. Okay under the authority of a man even though it may say that we always take that word and we we call it and we make it more than what it actually is under doesn't mean that you're not important so what i this is pastor des now you know, don't, don't just don't go and sit there and say this is what it's supposed to be this is what i've gathered submission is from my experience and me being a man and me going through this 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 as a, as a whole it mainly means that the woman is willing to serve and assist her husband who is the head of the household to ensure that both are in right standing with God and nurturing the foundation of their marriage so the woman is willing to assist willing to serve be, and assist the husband because she realizes that the husband is the head of the household. So, got a question. So if you are a single woman, should you even be talking about being submissive? Uh, well, let's hear it. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. So you why? said something on Sunday that hit it on Ted. I desire to be a wife. Mm -hmm. So if I don't put myself in the mindset of preparing to be a wife, I'm never going to know what that looks like. Mm -hmm. You don't just jump into something like, I don't just jump into, I want to run a marathon. That's 26.2 miles. <laughs> yeah, right. There's a lot of training that goes into that, which means in order for me to do that, I have to set aside the time, actually do the training days. That mm -hmm. is a true dedication. So with submission and, and that whole thought is if I desire to be something that I need to spend time looking at what it is, wow. preparing myself for it. Okay. So what does that look like? So, so 
as a single woman, what does that actually look like? Because it's, it's one thing to say it. It's one thing to write it down. But it's a totally, because some of us learn by reading, some of us learn by action, some of us are hands-on. So what does that look like for a single woman? Because some people feel that as single men or single, or single women and single men, they don't even be, need to be having a discussion about being submissive to anyone because I'm single. So that this conversation has nothing to do with me because it's mainly talking about a husband and a wife. But you just stated something that if you are desiring, then you would begin to learn what that looks like. So what exactly does will that look like for someone who is single? Submitting to my spiritual leaders, mm. having them holding me accountable. Okay. So for me, it's not just, like you said, it's not me just talking about it out loud, but me actually backing up with action, going to them when I'm having an issue. You know, hey, I have this problem. This is what I need intercession on. This is what I'm dealing with. Um, I'm thinking about dating. You know, where do I go from here? It's having those authentic, uncomfortable conversations. Wow. Not just, like you said, reading the word is one thing. So I know that's another thing I do. Spending time with God and having an understanding on where he wants me in. Whatever areas in my life needs to be pruned or pricked, always unveiling myself in that way, but also holding myself accountable to my spiritual leaders so that they know how to intercede for me as well. Mm. Wow. Anybody else? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm, I'm, the reason why I ask that is because I've actually had that conversation with someone. And that individual sat there and said, well, this has nothing to do with me because I'm single. I don't have to worry about submitting to anyone because I'm single. I don't have to worry about that until I desire to be married. And so at one point, in one facet, I understand what they said. But on the other side, first person you need to first person you need to realize about be submitted to is God. So what does a single person, what does that look like as a single person if you're desiring? First of all, if you desire to be married, because some folks don't desire to be married. Some folks desire to, to live a life like, like Oprah and Stedman. That's not godly. That's not biblical. God don't want you to live unmarried. He doesn't want you to live. He wants you to be married, right? But some of us feel as though I don't want to be married. I just want to be single the rest of my life. So I don't have to be submissive to anyone. And that's where the destruction lies. Because you got to be submissive to God. That's first person. That's, that's the first. That, that, that's number one. Because, you know, you, that's the one you reverence. That's the one you, you adore. That's, 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 that's who you follow. That's who you worship, right? That's who you study. You study what, who God is and how, what he's done for you and all the things that he's doing for you, right? Then... And this is where the rubber meets the road. Submitting to your leadership. Some of us have problems in relationships because we don't want to submit to leadership. I told you it was going to be one of those tonight. Heavy. God gave me this thing heavy. He said, son, some of my people are never going to be in a good relationship, godly and powerful and strong, because they don't know how to submit to leadership, period. They don't know how to submit to authority, period. How many of us can honestly say we submit to our bosses at work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Now you do. I, I, I see, that's why I love CP, he's so transparent. He's in the building, y'all, he made it, he made it. Yeah. <laughs> But let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. Like, how many of us can honestly sit there and say, when we see our boss in the morning, we like, or how many of us are more so like, mm. how many of us? Or how many of us, when our boss will tell us that we need to do something or we have a deadline to meet, we meet it and we do it in, in joy and in love? Or how many of us are, we're, we're, we're apprehensive or we just don't like him or her. We don't understand. Like, you know what I'm saying? The issue a lot of us deal with is authority, period. What? 
Oh, we got a lot of comments. I was going to say, I agree with you. And just like CP, I had been there where it was really hard to submit to authority, especially when it was so much contradiction. Mm. Saying one thing, doing the next, you know, uh, telling, saying one thing and then contradicting exactly what you said in the next statement, holding some people on the higher standards and others on the lower. But what I started doing during that time was asking God to change my heart or change the situation. What he revealed to me was everything I do, do unto him. Mm. And that completely changed my whole entire atmosphere. So when I went in, I rubbed my hands with oil. I said a prayer. And I was like, all right, God, you know exactly what this company needs long before the accident. And I pray that you use me as a willing servant to do your will. All right, get on the phone, 7 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> talking to these folks from wherever they are. And that really changed how I felt. So it didn't matter no longer what disagreement I had or if he had any type of um, this and this and that. It was, you know what, God, I'm serving you. You have me here for a purpose in a season, and I just want to serve my season well. Mm. And so, uh, but yeah, that's what changed for me. But it wasn't always. I wasn't always submissive and joyful and meeting deadlines with the joy. It was a struggle. And I was very opinionated. Then I had to, had to learn like to bite my tongue. I like that. I like that. You want to read the comments? You want me to read them? I guess I can read them. It's not that much. Oh, it's, it's, it's quite Abigail big. said, everyone must submit to someone. We submit to our boss at work. We submit to authority. Most importantly, we submit to God first. Mm -hmm. Eve said, I call it intentional preparation and positioning that is becoming the wife or husband you desire before God presents while in their singleness. Mm. Jeremy said, I hear you, Angela, but I feel like no one can ever be prepared to be a husband or wife because there's situations that you'll come across where you are not prepared for. Wow. Wow. Can anybody anybody chime in on what Deacon Jeremy just said? I can't say nothing because he gets mad when I say something first, so everybody no. else go, <laughs> go before ahead. me. <laughs> well, on what he just said, that's the same thing our relationship with God. Mm. We don't know what circumstances or anything that might arise in our relationship with him. And us living a life pleasing unto God. Things come up that we're not even expecting. But in the end of it, we know that the God that we serve is not going to allow us to get in anything that he doesn't make us able to get out of or handle it. Wow. So it's the same thing in marriage. You can never pre um predict what will happen in a marriage or what happened in a relationship if that is the case why would you get married because you're going to predict okay you know this is going to happen okay i know she's no we're not god right. so at the end of the day we cannot predict but at the end of the day we trust the god that's working in the situation mm, amen 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 wow Circumstance creates a greater relationship. That's amazing. Some, some, it's hot in here, boy. It's, that was good. That was good. So, so we talked about we 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 got on the women, right? We described the whole woman being submissive, right? But I gotta reel it back a little bit for our, us men. Y'all ready for this, men? We ready? In order for a woman to submit, the husband has to create an atmosphere cultivating enough or cultivate an atmosphere, an atmosphere conducive enough for the submission to be permissible. So now, man, I hope y'all ready for this because cause, cause God hit me with this while I was preparing my notes just last night. Men, we are the head of household. Husbands, we are the head, right? Now, this, this is what I got from God, so please. This is what he gave me, right? Literally within a 24-hour time span. He said, son, man was created first. Man was created first. Man was given the responsibility of naming the animals, ruler over everything, right? And then God realized that 
Adam needed a companion, someone he can relate to, right? Because let's just be honest, Adam couldn't be fruitful and multiply with an animal. Adam needed to be fruitful and multiply with someone else like God's image. So then woman was created, right? So then he broke it down and he said, in regards to the submission, if we look at, there's a verse in the Bible that says, it talks about husbands love your wives, women respect your husbands, right? And so I said, God, okay, so kind of kind of dissect that thing for me. So, you know, being a pastor, I also have a degree in psychology. I kind of was able to kind of dissect this thing. I said, why did it say men love your husbands? Wives, res I mean, I'm sorry, Jesus. No. No. Rewind. Rewind. Husbands love your wives. Wives respect your husband. Right? And then I looked at it. You ready for this, CP? Men, we get our edification from respect. What that means is when we feel respected, when we feel respected, and what I mean by respected is not, not us being a slave owner and you being our slave, but respected in listening to what I have to say. Respected in taking what, I, what I'm saying for, for value. Respected in knowing that God put me in position as the head of household. When I feel respected as a husband, it's easy for me to love. It's easy for me to love what's respecting me. It's easy for me. Why, why, some men, why some men don't like their jobs, they don't feel respected at their jobs. Why don't they feel respected at their jobs? Because there's no edification for what they do at their job. But when they get home and the wife wants to know what happened on their job, they begin to give them words of affirmation. There's a respect level that that husband feels. Therefore, he begins to love his wife. But the wife has to respect the husband. And let me tell you this. Wives, women, you ready for this? Women are fueled from emotion. We know this. We know this. Someone said, someone, I heard someone say women are emotional creatures. Now, I ain't going to call you a creature. I'm just going to call you an emotion. Woman. Emotion. You are fueled off of emotion. So guess what? Therefore, they will always respect what they love. Y'all ready for that? You ready for that? What do, you, what, what do we mean, Pastor Des? I love my house. Right? I, I, I love my house. So what, is that, what does that mean? I, I'm going to respect it. I'm going to make sure it's clean. I'm going to make sure it's tidy. I'm going to make sure it, it's, it's where it needs to be. I, I, I love my children. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure they're properly fed. I'm going to make sure they, they, they got clothes on their back. I'm going to make sure they need for nothing. Right? I respect things that I love. You know a woman respects something that she loves by the way it's carried. By the way she cares for it. That's the reason why God said in the Bible, husbands love your wives, but wives respect your husbands. Because if you love your husband, you're going to respect them. Because you respect what you love. Husbands, you're going to feel respected so you love what you feel respected. You see what I'm saying? Because I always ask God, I say, God, why it wasn't it the other way around? Why wasn't it men respect your husbands? Wives, I mean men respect your wives. Jesus, have mercy on my soul. Why wasn't it? Jesus, have mercy. Shano, Baba, Shete. Why wasn't it reversed? Why wasn't it wives love your husbands, husbands respect your wives? And that's when he broke it down to me. He said, because, you know, women are fueled from emotion. They're nurturers. Well, how, how do they nurture? They nurture off of emotions. They are moved and thrived off of emotions. 
men have to feel respected. Now, men, are you ready for this? I don't think they're ready for this one, Pastor Jericho. I don't think they're ready for this. Not only is it important for us to be cultivating an atmosphere that makes submission permissible, but we always have to understand that God put us in place to be authoritative. So what does that look like? As a man, God gave me the authority to name the things of this earth. When God created Adam, Adam was in charge. When, when Eve was influenced by the serpent to eat the forbidden fruit, God didn't call on Eve. God called on Adam. He said, Adam, where art thou? Right? So guess what, man? If something goes wrong in your household, God ain't going to go to the wife. He going to go to the husband. He's going to go to the husband. Because you have to set the example for what God wants the marriage to look like. Mm. In order for a woman to be submissive to a husband, the husband has to set the example for submission. The husband has to love the one that's being submission, so submissive. The husband can't use that word submission in a form of making them feel right and the wife feel wrong. Because guess what? God judges us in our leadership in our home. So when God began to kind of show me this thing in regards to how important the structure is in marriage as a man and a woman, men, we have to very, be very, very careful on what we do because God set us as the very first example. The very first example. See, this is why the enemy is ensuring that we have fatherless homes. Because the enemy knows that if I can take the father out of the home, there's no respect. And it's hard to love what you don't respect. It's hard to love what you don't respect. So if the enemy knows if I can continuously take the man out of the home, then there's a chink in the armor that I can begin to start breaking down the entire mold of marriage. So men, be very careful when we use this scripture, submit to me. Because the next first thing you got to ask yourself before you remind your wife of that scripture is ask yourself, am I being submissive to God? Because now I have to be in an example of the God that my wife worships. I have to be a walking flesh, not a walking in flesh, not, more, not I'm sorry, walking of flesh, not in the flesh, but walking flesh, bones, blood, or I have to be a living example of what she's reading in the Bible in regards to who Jesus was. I got to be that person. So before we begin to use that scripture and being submissive, and you need to do this because the Bible says be submissive, us as men need to realize, are we being submissive to God? Are we even cultivating an atmosphere to where we are in, uh, uh, in direct, a direct example of pleasing God? Because when it's all said and done, the marriage is a covenant that was honored by God. When we take vows, it's by God. It's in front of God. So everything that you're doing, now you've literally put yourself on strict, continuous accountability to God. What are you doing in this marriage? How are you moving in this marriage? How are you functioning as a husband in this marriage? Because what's going to end up happening is... If you do not check yourself and ask and, 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 and crucify your flesh continuously and to be in accordance with God, then you have officially created a chink in the armor for the enemy to come in. And then that's when y'all begin to get this argumentative spirit and you need to do this, you need to do that.
But this word submission is not, it's not for a dick. Say that again. Say that. It's, get your mic away from me. It's not a dictatorship. It's not. You got anything else? I, I have plenty, but please, you, no, you, you said all that no, you please, said. No, please, please, because it's not, it's, you know, we. It's, it's not it's a, a dictatorship. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. What yeah. else you got? No, like you went through my Did entire. I? Get away. And we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't. We did this separately. Separately. Completely separately. I did mine early this morning. He did his on his job. No, I didn't do it on my job. I was working on my job. Sure. Um, so I had put how, if a man said, well, if God said, men, love your, love your wife as you love yourself. Because a man that loves himself is not going to treat himself bad. He's going to feed himself. He's going to take care of himself, right? So men, do you really love yourself? Wow. Because we go through some traumatic things in our life to where sometimes we don't even like ourselves. So how can you portray that love to somebody else if you can't love yourself? So that was my first question. And I said, the next one is, do you think you can love us? This, oh, I said that one. The other one is, is, are you selfish in yourself? And how can you love me? Are you selfish in yourself? Don't read what I have. It's for me, not I'm, for you. I'm trying to, because you asked us the question. So yes. I'm trying to understand can you, the question. Because some men are selfish in what they do. So they take more, more time in themselves than they do their wives. If the wives is there pushing you, moving you, and, and progressing you, and loving you, and taking care of everything else, can you husbands love us? And show us the same gratitude, the same respect, the same love. Can you, can you put us first before you, before yourself? Hmm. Can we? I don't know. Oh, I'm not a man. Me. Oh, yeah. Can little. you? <laughs> yeah. Do you think I'm a man? You've been saying no, husbands love your not. husbands. <laughs> husbands respect your husbands. No, I truly feel <laughs> yes. We we can definitely we can we can definitely do that. The the the. I think the challenge in that is men feeling as though there's no uh, there's no uh, edification when that happens. There's no affirmation when that happens, you know, because there are a lot of things that I feel men do that do that that puts them in the back burner, that puts themselves aside, and they put people ahead of them. They put the family, they put the wife. But when it's not being noticed, when it's not like, you know, babe, I thank you so much for what you did. That was amazing. I know, I know you were tired from work, you know, and you came home and you told me to lay down and you took care of the kids and you did the dishes, yada, yada, yada. Thank you so much. That is where the respect level comes. Because, and, and, and we've misconstrued that word respect too. Yes. We think that word respect is also along the lines of being a slave. And it's not. Giving your husband words of affirmation is, is, is respecting him for what he's done. That's just giving a tone of atmosphere of respect, a color of respect to say, you know what? I see what you do. I, I love what you do. I admire what you do. I respect what you do. You did an amazing job. Thank you so much. That alone does wonders for the husband. And that's that respect. Go and what ahead. about the wives? What do you mean about the wives? What, what yeah. about the wives? Do the wives get the same thing? Babe, yeah. thank you so much yes. for doing the... You, no, you ask, do they? Or you ask, and should they? What are you saying? Should they and do yeah, they? Yeah, they should. They should, but do they? No. Okay. Not all the time. So like we said, back to the first thing. And further, submit to one another of reverence right. for Christ. It goes back to the same thing. It's, it's basically saying what you do for you, you do for him. What you do for him, you do for her. You yeah. respect and love. But what gets us, like Say you that. said, what gets us is the respect that I have for you and the love you have for me. Mm. That's what fills us up. That's what fills you up, right? right. It goes back to uh, love languages. You said words of affirmation. So that goes, this is all tied in together in, in respecting, loving, and, and what God is saying. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, I'm waiting. 
What you waiting? I on? thought you. I thought. I thought something was coming. Like you was like getting into it. And I thought it was like it was gonna be a boom. So I was waiting on it. So I was looking. And then you like stop. So I was like, I'm waiting. Like don't leave us hanging. What are you gonna say? No, it's gone. That was it. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. You oh, know my memory. Man, let's see. You Re- got Abigail saying, Come on, Pastor Jerka. <laughs> like we sit here waiting on you to 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 come with it. Like you, it's like you giving us cliffhangers. Yeah, come on. No, <laughs> but no, but seriously, it goes back to the first scripture. We submit to each other. There's no, yes, in God it says there's authority. Our husband is the head, right? But Without the body, mm. the head can't survive, mm. which is why God had gave you a wife, a helpmate, right? Because you can't stand alone. So mm. if you want the rest of the body to live, then you have to take care of it. I like that. I like how you put that. Stop reading my notes. No, I'm not reading. I'm actually thinking. I'm listening. I'm listening to what's, what's I'm listening because um, men, we got work to do. I'm just, I'm just sitting here listening and everything, and I'm hearing some things. And men, we got work to do. But women, women, too. women, women, you got work to do. But I'm, I'm speaking it from a man's perspective and understanding that. what we're responsible for when when we literally choose the woman that we call we want to call our wife because it says in the bible he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor from god right so imagine everything we are responsible for and accountable for and then imagine us using submission and respect and love out of context. Because, man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to kind of, kind of map this out. Now, let's let's take it, let's take it, let, let's take it a step beside marriage, and let's go into relationships. Yeah. Let's go into people that are dating. Let's go into those, what they, what they call it, courtship. Like, the people that are that are courting each other, right? <laughs> the people that are, you know, dating each other. And let's 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 go there. So, if I'm, if, if, if Pastor Jerrica and I weren't married, but we're dating, should we be following this, this whole submissive thing? So, if I'm dating, right? <laughs> we're dating. Yes, yes, please. We're dating. Should she be like... Submissive to me, as 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 her as her date, as her as the one that she's you know as I'm courting her. So should we should be should she be submissive to me? Say that again. In the mic, please. In the mic. Uh uh uh. Say you say what you got to say first, CP. Say it from your chest. <laughs> if she desires to be your wife. If she desires to be your wife, okay. You got some apostle. I see, I, 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 I see the, I see the movement, I see the body language, boy. I can't wait to hear what you got to say. This whole thing is like, okay. Now with the single part of us dating, I feel what is the purpose behind our dating? Mm. There must be a purpose. Now mm. if your purpose is just to get some booty, the perp. I'm sorry. No, I mean, we're no online. Say it. This is the platform. <laughs> But Say if your that. purpose is just for that, it's just for sex, no. Because of the fact you're not right then, you're not respecting or mm. anything to each other. Because it's your only purpose is to get the flesh. You're Ooh. worrying about your flesh. Now, if your purpose is to find that husband or have that wife, it says the man that findeth a wife. Now, are you in that wifely position? Or are you just sitting there waiting for a sugar daddy to come along to marry you to take you off of what you think that you should be getting? That's two different things. I'm not looking for a sugar daddy. I'm looking for somebody that's going to be able that I can look up to and walk with Mm. in a relationship. Mm. So if I don't have that, I don't need anything. And my issue with married women sometimes is this. We look for our men to do what they are supposed to do. And because they're not doing what they're supposed to do, we slack off of what we need to do. There you go. So when we stand before God, 
We can't sit there and say, God, we didn't take care of our wifely duties because our husband wasn't doing what they need to do. So at the end of the day, we are responsible for our own actions. So when we stand before God, we can truly pass the book and say, okay, you were responsible for this. You're responsible for that. But at the end of the day, who's responsible for your emotions and what you do? God said, I put you in situations to see how you will respond to it. So a whole lot of time we respond to him like Adam and Eve did. Well, if you never gave me that wife. And if that serpent never came along, so we always passing the buck on each other, but take the responsibility for what you did not do. And if you stand up and do what you might, you supposed to do, maybe your husband or wife would end up being who it is that they need to be wow. because they have that partner wow. that's willing and doing what it is that God says do. Wow. Amen to that. On that note, I'm done. I'm done. Can the mic Amen just officially to that. drop? It's a, and I, and I'm, oh, I love it. I love it. I'm I glad you it. said that. I love it. Oh, go ahead, Pastor Jerrica. Because I got you. something. I don't, don't want to say it yet. Ah, you was on. Oh, my God. So Woo! with you saying that, that does happen a lot. Women that are married slack on their stuff huh. to punish the husband. Huh. To make them feel guilty. To make them feel upset. Infuriate them. And that takes away all respect. All respect. Therefore, it's making it hard for him to love you because you're not doing anything either. Shut so now up. it's a tit for tat. Like, you're going to get better and then I'll get better. And then it's vice versa. So when is the growth going to happen? Mm. And then that's when divorce happened because I'm tired of you and you're tired of me. Oh, you and you ain't doing what mouth. you're supposed to do. And I ain't doing what I'm supposed to do. We try to make it work for a little bit. But guess what? I'm, I'm just done mm. with you because you still haven't got it. Instead of communicating about it, instead of doing what you're supposed to do, it ends up in that. Now, do you see why? I'm not done. Oh, sorry. I'm going to do you like you did me, Pastor. You <laughs> talked the Pastor. whole time. Sorry, Pastor. Yeah, you did. Sorry. So, <laughs> with that happening. You look so good we, going in, though. Thank you. you thank you, boo. Going in. So, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. Everyone knows this one, right? Love is patient. Mm. Love is kind. Mm. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Mm. No records mm. of wrong. Right? So, I'm sorry. Mm. So, I got on, well, was got on by my spiritual mother. And she said, you know, I'm tired of, uh, you know what? I want you to read this. And then I want you to tell me, do you love your husband? Wow. And I read that and I was like, mm. Wow. Because I was in that spot where I was like, well, he deserved what I'm giving him. Because he's not, I was in that spot. Where if he's not doing what he's doing, then why should I do what I'm doing? And then us women, although we can stay silent, some of us have words and we, we stand our ground. But others, I'm a silent one. So I take jabs. I take jabs. And when I take jabs, I take jabs in front of people. People that already know. That way those people can say something because I'm tired of saying something, right? But I had to learn that's not the right way to do. You're supposed to cover mm. your husband regardless. There is no wrongdoings. It stays in the household, right? You cover it. So when there is wrongdoing, you speak about it. We are at the place where we can speak about it because he is being respected and I'm now being loved. Do you see how arguments can now change? with the tone that we have, the word that we have now. Not only that, yeah, I'm gonna do it to you like no, you did me. I, nope, shh, so ah, ah. so That's how I felt, but I stayed no, silent. I, I know. And then the second thing is, whatever you do, whatever you show, whatever example you are, you are that in front of your children. So you're showing your children that, hey, you do not have to submit under your husband. Hey, you do not have to love your wife because I'm doing it this way. So if they don't see it, 
guess what? They're not going to do it. Whatever they see, they're going to imitate because that's what they grow up on. Therefore, that's why we have issues in relationships now because we don't have the right examples to put us in the marriage space, right? These are the things that happen in life. And so when we have these questions, it's okay, but what is your tone when you have the question? Are you trying to gain something? Are you trying to be ahead of something? Are you trying to, to, to have more authority? Are you trying to show you're bigger than the other person? Or are you trying to get clarity? Are you trying to have that love? Are you trying to speak this with God? Is it really what you want? Because it is work. Marriage is work. Relationships is work. Singleness is work. Everything about this life is work. It's not just for married folks. No, it's submitting. Submitting under God. Can you do that? We are his children, right? So if we can't submit under to God, we can't submit under ourselves because we have no, there's no covering. There's nothing there for us to look at for an example. Go ahead. I'm going to let you go. Jesus. And that's the thing. And, and I'm going to be so honest when I say this and so transparent when I say this because a lot of people don't. Now, it may not be this way for a small percentage. But the majority of divorces happen because of that alone. Right. Tit for tat. Tit for tat. Yep. Tit for tat. Tit for tat. Right. You ain't giving me what I need, therefore I'm not gonna give you what you need. You not give me what you want, you not give me what I want, therefore I'm not giving you what you want. And then it grows into a cancer. Yeah. And it eats away at the relationship. It eats away at the marriage. And then before you know it, you walking away from a divorce, you're divorcing or you're separated or you're divorced, you walk into a relationship with the same stuff. But you didn't realize what you did wrong in the first marriage yep. or the first relationship because you didn't understand or you didn't submit to what it means to be submissive. Right. You didn't respect what it means to be respectful. Right. You didn't love what it means to be loved. And therefore, we're in a position and in a climate where divorces are like, they're, they're, they're it's literally whatever. like, it's like whatever. And I'm gonna be honest, like, I didn't see it in my last marriage. And to this day, I ask God for forgiveness for the things that I did not do as a husband in my last marriage. Because I was in that, I was in that realm of tit for tat. I wasn't getting what I needed. I'm not going to give you what you need. And But I was that same husband that says, well, I'm the head of household. I'm supposed to be getting what I need. You see how misconstrued and perverted we use a scripture? I didn't even, my relationship with God at that moment wasn't even nowhere near where it is now. But a lot of us are in that, in that state of mind where we feel as though in order for this to happen for me, in order for me to happen, in order for it to happen for you, it has to happen for me. And that's where it gets mis, that, that, that selfishness. And it goes back to what I said before. When we talked about, um, last month, we talked about accountability. Yep. What is going to happen when you stand before God and you have to give an account for your actions, what you've done? And it's so funny to me. I sit there and I say this to myself. I say, I don't get, I don't get why, why, I, why there are people in, like I say, unhealthy marriages. And what I mean by unhealthy marriages is, and I can, I can be wrong. Lord, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm getting a revelation even sitting in this moment. When I see, let's say, the woman is, uh, is a believer, the woman is coming to church, the woman is believing in God, the husband is a sinner, the husband is an alcoholic, the husband is literally like night and day. And from the outside looking in, it may be miserable. But now I get a revelation in this moment right here that 
that woman is being accountable for what she's doing in that marriage. So if she's doing everything godly pleasing in that marriage, when it's time for God to call her home, she can give a positive account for what she's done in that marriage. And if God makes a way for that marriage to be dissolved, she still will be rewarded for what she's done in that marriage. But it's when we are responsive in sin. And notice, men and women of God, men and men, husband and wives, when we're not respecting our husband, we're sinning. When we're not loving our wives, we're sinning. Why? Because we're going against God's command. This is crazy. I would keep going by saying, how do you show? Because you said, how do you respect your husbands? How do you, how do you love your wife? How do you show your wife you love them? Wow. How because it could be different to that wife. Right. And that goes back to what we talked about with love languages. Yeah. We did the five love languages. I, and, and, but and that's the thing. In order for me to feel, in order for me, I have to respect something I love. If I respect it, I know about it. I've done my research on it. Like men, you know men love cars. We love our vehicles. We respect our vehicles. You can tell because our cars are always clean, right? Men always take pride in how their cars look. If you don't have kids in the back and, seat. Regardless, I know a man specifically got seven kids, and he takes pride in the way his it's car six. looks. Six kids, sorry. He takes pride in the way his car looks. He cleans it. Why? Because he respects his car. Right? He takes care of it. Because he knows that that's, that's something that he, that he loves. So he's going to respect it. He's going to make sure it's taken care of. Men, if we're being loved by our wives, we're going to respect the position that they hold. And we're going to ensure that how we love them, we have to do the research on how to love our wife. And we have to realize that it has nothing to do with what we do. It's what they want, what they need. And that's when it goes back, like I said, to those, those five love languages. It always works. It always works. It always works. Trust me when I tell you. <laughs> Trust me. So if you're in a relationship, we talked about this a few months ago. If you're in a relationship. This is and, the fourth time. And, and, and you're, you're in that moment where you feel as though, and I, and I love how you said it, Apostle. I love it. I don't know about y'all, but even if I was not married to my wife now, I'm too old to be out there just willy-nilly playing around. I, I just can't. One, because I, I'm accountable to God. Let's just say that. I'm accountable to how this temple is being used. And I'm accountable how I abuse this temple. Number one. Number two... I'm too old for the nonsense. I'm too old. I literally just turned 41 years of age. I'm too old to be out here trying to act like, say it, 16. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we too old out here to be doing that. We too old. We too old. Number three. I'm sorry, but there's way too many diseases that's just floating around in this world. You lay with somebody that look clean, you come up burning. I'm just saying, it is not an eat, no. Mm -mm. We don't have time. No. We don't have time. We don't. And it's just like you said, like, if I feel that when you, and, but a lot of people may also feel differently about this because they feel in order for me to be serious, I have to know who I want to be serious with. I got to try. I got to test the waters. I got to, I got to, I got to date. I got to, you know. And, and, and I get that to an extent. I get that to an extent. You, 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 you may have to get just get, get out there and you know go out to go out on dinners and and, 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 and enjoy and, and and have that friendship. But when you are ready to make that next level step, I truly feel that one, your relationship with God has got to be significant. It has got to be connected. It has got to be to the point where you are hearing from God. Got to be there. 
And two, sorry, y'all may not like this online, may not like, but listen, you've got to be submissive to your, to your spiritual leadership. Because God talks to you five ways. Two of those ways is through the word and through your spiritual leader. That's how you get confirmation of the things God is speaking to you. So if, if you don't have at least those two things, I would say don't even worry about getting into a relationship. Don't even get into that portion because it's, it, it, it won't do you any good. It really won't. It, it really won't. And I don't want to get y'all to a place where you are bitter because of what relationships have done. And a lot of us are, are, are trying to get that man or that woman to fill the void that God needs to be filling to begin with. Yeah. And we don't realize that. That I would, there's a void in me that needs to be filled but I feel it needs to be filled by, by a woman. I thought it needs to be filled by a man. And when you get to that place, they will, that void will always be there because you're substituting flesh for spirit. Yeah. I mean, spirit for flesh. So you always got to make sure your relationship with God is intact. Amen. Well, we got a couple of comments. Oh, we got comments. Oh, sorry. Jeremy said, today's generation does, uh, doesn't want to put in the work or even believe in putting the work. Marriage is a marathon, not a race. Say that again. Mama said, you can't carry baggage into a new relationship. It won't work. Mm. Eve said, the key to successful marriage or relationship, I feel, is in, how you say the word? There you Deliberateness. go. Deliberateness. Yep, being there deliberate. Go, when both individuals deliberately mm -hmm. do their part to keep it thriving, afloat, blissful, and blessed. Mm. Just as we wake up and brush our teeth deliberately, we ought to love one another deliberately. Amen. Amen. Well, guess what, you guys? That's no, it for Love's no, Imprint because yet. we are 17 minutes not over. Honor, 17 minutes over? Honor their time. God, you're right. I got to be intentional about honoring your time. But I, I like that deliberate. But... Can I add to that deliberateness? In your prayer. We got to be intentional. There you go. We got to be intentional. And we have to realize that being intentional is not my way. It's only my way. Being intentional is understanding each other. Yeah. Compromising. Say that again. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, I love y'all so much. Did y'all enjoy tonight's Love's Imprint? Did y'all enjoy it? Y'all enjoy the, our, our topic about being submissive and, and what it means to be submissive? And listen, I, I thank y'all so much. This, this, this blessed my heart um, because I realized what my, I, I've I always, I've, I've been realizing, but it was more of a, it, it more of a, it magnified itself in regards to the things that I did not do in my last marriage and my responsibility and what got it to where it was. And also what I lacked in this marriage and my responsibility in realizing how God views me. That's the thing. We got to realize how God views us before we can even get to a place where we are viewed by others. God views me to be the man, the leader, the example setter. I'm in charge in regards to how my family moves and to how they are blessed, how they, in everything that I do. And in order for that to take place, I have to be serious about my position that God has put me in. And women, man, the nurturers, God puts you in position if you realize what you mean to God. If you realize what you mean to God. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. No. If you realize what you mean to God, you will not be compromising your body for no one. Not a man not a boy, not a teenager. You will not compromise your body for no one. 
Because the, the way God created you, the way God created your temple is amazing. The things you can do, the life you can produce, the pain you can endure. Men, man can't do that. So if we re if we realize how God views us, uh, it's gonna be tough cookie for a man to find you. Period. <laughs> It'd be a tough cookie, and you would already be walking in the position of a wife because you'd be respecting yourself from the inside out. Mm. And think about that. And I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Think about that. Think about it, it, the Bible says. A man that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor. Obtains favor. One, women, you are obtaining a favor obtainers. So when a man, a man finds you and marries you, he's obtaining favor. So don't let him test the favor. Say that again. Say that it intense, man. We it intensifies. Uh. It intensifies. Ah, shando do bobo so cold. It intensifies. Women, you are favor obtainers. So when a man finds you, he obtains favor. You are a good thing. Good. So you should be respected and loved as such. You should be reverent. Reverent. Is that the word? Reverence. I'm saying that right? Reverence as such. You should be respected. Looking, you look at yourself in the mirror every morning and say, I'm a good thing. I'm a favor obtainer for wow, a Wow, it's not even Mother's Day. I'm a favor obtainer. No, we getting it. We getting it good. And men should be respectful so enough to know before I test the favor, I got to make sure that I found the favor obtainer. Right, that part. The right one. The right one. And if I'm finding her nine times out of ten, it's the one God has already chosen for me because I've already been in close contact and in close proximity with God. And he's already been leading and guiding me because I already told him and requested to him what I need. Before she was married, you were already wife material before she was married. Mm. Mm. It's funny because Pastor Jericho just talked about that earlier. You and your wifey material. That's why we getting pruned. That's why we begin pruned. That's why God is cutting. Yes, please, please. What's the request? Somebody give her a mic so she can say that over the mic. Somebody give, 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 yes, please, I, I, yes. Why is it more divorces in, in the kingdom mm. than it is in the world? If we are already submitting to him and trying to do what's pleasing before him, but we're screwing everything up. Mm. We're making a mess of the kingdom, but the world is sitting down there looking at us and say, oh, why would they want what we got if we, I mean, so can you let us know? Can you like tap in and like tap, tap, God, give it to me? <laughs> <laughs> because that bothers me. Kingdom bothers me because of the fact we are so far apart from what God called us to be as a kingdom. Mm -hmm. We are so divided. We cannot work together. Mm -hmm. We cannot. We are a divided family. That's it. 
So how can a divided family function the way that God needs for us to function? So that's my issue. That's my question. And that's my heart desire to see the kingdom come together the way that our father said that it's supposed to be. He hates seeing his children going wow. at each other. Wow. So can you explain why? On another time. I oh, know time. time is up. Okay. Because I was ready. I was why ready. Christian marriages are so messed up. I was ready. I was ready. Jesus, have mercy on my soul. Uh. God, we thank you for love's imprint tonight. Yes, so no mic for you. God, we thank you for today. We thank you that our love was being shown today through you, Jesus. We thank you that the word that came out today does not fall on, on, on uh, deaf ears, Father God, but it falls into fertile ground, that each of us come out with something, Father God, that it enriches us. Father, we pray that those that are single and desire to be married, that they have found favor in you for them to be able to be married under your eyes, Father. We thank you that we're not out here doing what we want to do, Father God, but we are seeking your face in it. Father, we just love you and adore you, and we thank you for this space where we can be open and transparent. I thank you, Father, for the learning, and I thank you, God, for the growth. And Father, today, as we close Love's Imprint, we thank you for what you have done in this atmosphere and we honor you in jesus name amen, amen. we love y'all so much it's literally sitting in my throat pastor jerica it's sitting in my throat why well no 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 turn no 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 i promise not to give the whole thing i promise not to give the whole thing this is it's a small you know we no this is gonna be next month this is definitely gonna be next month's topic so we we gotta say uh every the last thursday and every month is love's imprint so we're definitely gonna talk about this next month october the last thursday in october but I gotta say this one thing because like it's like literally sitting in my throat. And I, I heard accountability. I heard accountability. I heard my people know what's wrong, but they're not taking accountability and fixing it. That's what I heard. Accountability. My people know what's wrong. They know how to fix it, but they're not taking responsibility and fixing it. Because that's going to be a whole, that's a whole nother thing about, oh God, I, I see it. I literally see it and I see the divide. And it's, it, it's easy to divide in the kingdom because we've been divided in our households for so long. It's easy to divide in the kingdom because our marriages have been divided in the kingdom for so long. So it's easy to run away. Man, Jesus, I love y'all so much. <laughs> this is the Excelling Church, Georgia campus, where your life gets better from here. I am Pastor Desmond Peacock Sr., a.k.a. Pastor Des, along with my lovely wife, <laughs> Pastor Jerrica. This is Love's Imprint. We love y'all so much. Have an amazing evening. We will see y'all Sunday at 4 p.m. Love y'all. Take care. <laughs>